Well, they already chopped down last week the uh, all of the sunflowers and wildflowers that were here. And um, I seen the poor birds. Poor birds were out here looking for food, seeds. And I haven't seen the poor rabbit and her two little bunnies. So the rabbit stopped coming by. There's some sunflowers looking to grow there. But yeah, I see some birds. They come right over here and they try to look for seed on the ground. But I also understand too that it's for fire prevention. Possibly. Oh, but anyways, when they did this, when they chopped down uh, all this, mowed this down, uh, it really caused a lot of um, allergies in the air that my husband, he got a severe attack and I had to call the ambulance to come to our home and they had to give him oxygen. Um, so they gave him oxygen and a breathing treatment in the home. And then they transported him to the local hospital, the ER. And um, yeah, they also, gave, I don't remember what injection, they gave him some type of an injection and he instantly felt better may have been steroids or prednisone but uh, yeah the uh, this I mean the worst thank god the worst that I get is like my eyelids the skin around my eyes like eyelids and under my skin uh, it gets really itchy and irritated and sometimes I forget to wash my face when I feel it's itchy and I end up scratching that area. So that's why my skin looks a little rough or my eyes look tired. But um, overall, I don't have any issues and I'm very thankful for that and I like to keep it that way. But yeah, so he's feeling better now. And... Uh, yeah, so he just, he said, you know, it is what it is as far as medical bills, because with our insurance that he has to his employer, you pay an uh, emergency room visit is uh, $500. And then you have the ambulance transportation on top of that. So we don't know how much that will be, but... Those things will just have to work out because uh, life is more important than, you know, money. The beauty of it is, um, yeah, the workers are out here doing construction early morning. It's not even seven o'clock yet. And I lost my train of thought. I was gonna say that the beauty of it now is that it's windy, it's breezy, it's not so hot early in the morning, but there's no, the humidity is very low because that was one thing that I really missed was getting up early, going on morning walks, doing things to beat the heat. But here, the humidity level is so high or was high since last week that uh, I didn't want to really even go out walking. I mean, who would want to go walking or do things outside? I guess it's just a matter of getting used to. So someone close and dear to us um, is ex has recently experienced layoff at their company, their job. And yeah, it's just like um, it's just like a domino effect, it seems like. And um, you know, this person has car payment, car insurance, rent, um, 
just your basic needs that need to be taken care of. And uh, it's really rough when you're facing something like um, a layoff. So this market really needs to, the economy really needs to turn around for the best. Do you see any signs of it turning for the best? Do you see any signs of it recuperating? Anything positive are you seeing personally? Um, yeah, I mean, any one of us can face that type of situation you know, so it's really something to think about. And um, it's also very important to consider, you know, trying, trying your best or just trying to lessen the bird, the debt burden on ourselves, you know, in general as a as a working class, you know, just anybody, whether you're working or not, you know, going into retirement, things like that. It seems like, um, and you know, not most people have a nest egg uh, to look forward to heading toward that direction. So everybody's circumstances are different, but I think one of the most important ones is to try to maybe consider everybody's um, ideas, everybody's perspective, everybody's situation, experience is different, but what do you think about doing your best to work, working um, to being debt free? You know, maybe having a vehicle that you don't longer make car payments on. Um, maybe your home, your mortgage is paid in full. Or you live in a place, like for my, for instance, my dad, he doesn't own his home. He rents. And the owner, they own a lot of properties. And my dad right now in 2023 for a two-bedroom, one-bath really good decent sized backyard and a garage he pays 675 whereas the people around him it's like a triplex so the people around him are paying over maybe 13 to 1500 dollars maybe more i really don't know what the rent is going out going over there but in, that's in California. That's in the Bay Area, the South Bay. And many years ago, when my mom was alive, um, the landlady, the owner, told my parents, you know, as long as you two remain here and, you know, you're comfortable, I'm comfortable, um, you, you know, you maintain the place, <clears throat> I will not raise your rent. So they've been there since... They've been there for quite a while. I think I must have been in middle school, maybe, when they settled there. And why they never considered to buy a home back then, I don't know. I don't want to bring that subject up to my dad, bring that subject up to dad, but um, he's very thankful because dad's living, dad, a.k.a. Pop, Pop's living very comfortable comfortably in his on his social security and he's got a little small check he gets for retirement and then when my mom passed away she also uh, she worked for the state or for the school district so she contributed to her calipers so when she passed away that was left to my dad so my dad gets a small little you know less than five hundred dollar payout to to my dad and on top of his um, social security. So Pop, Pop pretty much is, he's settled, he's happy. Pop's truck, he's got a 96 Chevy Silverado. 
paid for a long time ago. His rent is six seventy five. Um, he's living his best life right now. I mean, he's on his own. He's still he's healthy. I mean, he does have you know high blood pressure. He's di um, he's got sugar diabetes that so he has to maintain and keep it keep on top of. But overall, his, he's his cognitive. He's great. He still drives. He goes, does his own grocery shopping. He does his own cooking. He's very independent. Does his laundry and cleans around the house. And uh, we're all thankful for that. And so, not everybody though has that opportunity, like Pop, where your landlord is going to tell you, "I'll never raise your rent." right now that that place he's living in it could be maybe as high up as 18 to 2500 dollars in the south bay in california so pop's very um pop has a lot of gratitude for his circumstances and uh, yeah it just kind of makes us wonder you know we just don't know and perhaps that would be our goal is to try our best to just live comfortably <clears throat> as we walk down that path, you know, in our life, as we age and we get older. So, yeah, that's that's a topic that's very, int uh, very um, on my mind as well as my husband's mind because my husband's seven years older than me. So in three years, he'll be 60. <laughs>